Number 70, construct your own problem. So consider an airplane headed for a runway in a crosswind. Construct a problem in which you calculate the angle the airplane must fly relative to the air mass in order to have a velocity parallel to the runway. Among the things to consider are the direction of the runway, the wind speed and direction, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, calculate the speed of the airplane relative to the ground. All right, so guys, take a look at the, I made a problem over here. All right, so basically, um, here's the, if you couldn't tell by the wonderful drawing, by the way, here's the runway. All right, here's a plane coming in for a landing. Okay, it is experiencing a crosswind, and it's a, a due east crosswind here. That's the velocity of the air relative to the Earth. And I gave it a value of 10 meters per second. All right. Uh, what that means is that the airplane will have to adjust, right? It can't fly straight down. Okay, it can't point its nose parallel to the runway. It has to point it at a slight angle now, uh, right? Because it has to account for this crosswind. So that the velocity then of the plane relative to the air right, is going to be 70 meters per second at some angle. All right, relative to the crosswind. And, you know, the resultant vector, therefore, right, is going to be that we want the plane to move parallel, okay, to the runway so it lands on the runway. All right, so the velocity of the plane relative to the earth would be considered the resultant. All right, so um, if I had to construct, you know, let's just say like a coordinate system here, right, I would have these three things going on. So here is simply the VPA, right? And that is 70 meters per second. And it has a certain angle. I'm going to call this my theta. Okay. Then there is the other uh, VPE pointing straight down. Okay. That's VPE. Remember, that's the resultant. And then we have the VA that's pointing to the east. That is VAE uh, 10 meters per second. Okay, that has a value, sorry, of 10. So since this problem is a uh, relative velocity problem, we need to locate the resultant first. And I, like I said, it is the uh, velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. If you didn't know uh, that that was the case, usually it's going to be the vector in between the two other vectors. Okay, now knowing that that is the resultant, what I can now use is my relative velocity formula over here, realizing that this item is the resultant vector. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say to solve for then the velocity of the plane relative to the earth, I would need to know the velocity of the plane relative to the air plus then the velocity of the air relative to the earth. All right, I'm just following these subscripts. The A though in, in this equation here does not mean air, it just means one of the variables, okay? Great, so in order to find this, I know I need to sum up the components of VPA and VAE. All right, do I know VPA or VAE? Well, I do. I mean, I have the values of VAE over here, and I have some values for VPA, uh, though I just don't have maybe all the numbers I may need. But that's okay, right? Let's construct a component table to organize our thoughts, all right, and to also help us solve the problem. So list VPA here, your velocity of the plane relative to the air, and VAE, the velocity of the air relative to the Earth, and realize that when you sum them up, you get your resultant vector, or in other words, you get the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. Okay, so for, first let's take a look at the velocity of the plane relative to the air. Okay, that is this vector right here. Now, it has an X and a Y component to it, right? So its X component is in the negative direction. Okay, so I'll just call that negative VX. And then it also has a Y component, and that's also negative, right? Going straight down. So I'll call that negative vy. Now, let's just simply create an equation for the vx, okay? Um, I don't know the hypotenuse, right? Let me see if I can just pull this thing out. No, vp. Can I just get the a? Yes, most of it. Okay, that's good enough. So notice that the hypotenuse value is just vpa. I don't know what it is yet, all right? But if I know the hypotenuse here, I have this angle theta, okay? Remember that, actually, no, I apologize. I do know the, I, I mentioned it was 70, right? That's the value. So let me just write that in here. That's getting a little crammed, but I do know the hypotenuse value at 70. 
I don't know the angle though, but I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use uh, cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of my angle, which I don't know, will be equal to the adjacent side, which remember is negative of the velocity of the plane relative to the air in the x direction, all divided by 70. So I'm going to solve for this. Why? Because I want to take the value and plug it into the table for the x component. So that would be negative VPAX is equal to 70 cosine of theta. Remember, just distribute now the negative sign there. Okay, so I'm just going to place that over there now. All right, so take that value and plug it in. So we got negative 70 cosine of theta. Now, same thing for the y component of this triangle. We know the hypotenuse. We know this angle. We're looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, we're going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of the unknown angle will be equal to negative, right, v, the velocity of the plane relative to the air in the y direction, all over 70. So remember, I'm going to distribute the negative, but I'm going to do it all at once. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air in the y direction should be negative 70 sine of theta. Okay, so just plug that in, negative 70 sine of theta. That vector's done. Now, next vector is the velocity of the air relative to the Earth, and that's this vector right here, right? That's the uh, yellow one. So what are its components? Well, it's purely in the x direction. It's purely horizontal. So therefore, that uh, vector has a only an x component of 10, right? And it's positive because it's pointing to the right, and it has no y component, so that's simply zero. Okay, now let's see. Do we know anything about the components of the resultant vector or the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth? Remember, it has to travel parallel to the to the runway. So, does it have any x components? No, we don't want to. We, we don't want to have any x components. We want to. We want to land parallel to the runway here. So, there's no x components. And what would the y component be? Well, we don't know. So that's going to be our question mark, right? Now, it's not necessarily a question mark because remember, we add the x and the y's up to equal the resultant. Okay. So. If I were to add negative 70 sine theta to zero, it'd just be negative 70 sine theta, right? Now this one I'm gonna create, so that should be clear. Okay, now this I'm gonna create an equation for, right? I'm gonna list it out. So it's gonna be negative 70 cosine of theta plus 10 should equal zero. So bring this guy to the other side, cosine of theta, right? Why am I doing that? Well, because I realize that I have one equation with one unknown. So can I solve for my theta? Sure, right? So 10 is equal to 70 cosine of theta. So divide this side out by 70. And now we're going to get cosine of theta equaling 10 over 70. And then simply do the inverse tangent now. So in your calculator, do second, second, uh, not tangent, what the heck am I talking about? Second, I'm just seeing if you guys are paying attention. Second cosine of 10 over 70. So we get 81.8. So we get 81.8, that's degrees. Okay, so remember that angle represented this angle in my picture right over here. All right, now that angle has a value of what? Well, that angle is south of west. So I can now say that my velocity, let me put it in black because we did it in black before. That's this thing. All right, so the velocity of the plane relative to the air should be 70, 70 meters per second at 81.8 degrees south of west. Okay, that would be the answer to that question. Then they also wanted us to answer now what should the velocity of the plane be relative to the Earth, right? It said also calculate the speed of the airplane relative to the ground or relative to the Earth. So how do I do that? Well, I need to know all the components for this. And don't we? Right, don't we know them here? The X and the Y components? So remember that we have, oh, went back one, two, one too many. So remember that we have this formula, that the resultant vector, which is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth in this problem, is the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's squared. So the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth should equal, well, the x's were zero, so that's easy, plus then negative 70 cosine of theta. Well, guess what? Don't we know the theta? Didn't we just find it over here? Yeah, so we can just plug it in, right? 
So now it's just going to be negative 70, put your parentheses, sine of 81.1. 81.1 closed, excuse me, 81.8. What am I talking about? 81.8, close the parentheses and square it. And now just do this calculation. And we got second square root of negative, well, I can leave out the negative too, right? So 70 times, make sure you put your parentheses though. 70 times the sine of 81.8 and square that whole thing, which should just be itself, right? So the squared gets rid of the squared. You don't even need that. So this should become 69.3. And that is the magnitude now of that velocity. So it should be a little slower. That should kind of make sense, right? Because part of the 70 meters per second airspeed that the plane um, is flying at has to overcome the crosswind. So the, the velocity that's left to travel in the pure Y direction or parallel to the uh, landing strip should be a little less, which it is. And then at what angle? We could just say purely south, right? So the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth is 69.3 meters per second due, due south. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. That concludes this chapter. Please check out. we got a whole bunch of videos covering all the questions in the chapter. So if you guys have any questions about how to do one of the problems, please feel free to check out any of our, uh, any of our uh, other videos. And uh, it would mean the world to us if you were able to subscribe. That would be awesome. And um, I will see you in the next chapter.